when we're talking about outdoor installations, immediately we all thought about Patrick Dougherty's work. Um, Patrick has done 200 of these site-specific monumental sculptures throughout the United States and in Europe. I usually uh, don't have anything set in my mind when I come to a place, but I try to look at the space, I try to evaluate the space and what it looks like what kind of scale would be important. He loved the coastal redwoods in the background, how they would create a really interesting background element. And then he wanted to create a piece that was essentially framed by the two trees that flank it. One of the big um, issues about uh, springing something into a site is that you want to have the scale that's appropriate. So that, that a kind of reciprocity with site has something to do with the rightness of scale. That's, that feels like it belongs there. In this case, we've nestled it under these big uh, sycamore trees over there and the limbs are kind of barely touching down at the top of the sculpture, kind of connecting it to the natural world. One of the secondary gains of being someplace and, and partnering with an organization like the Palo Alto Arts Center is that they have a certain number of volunteers that um, work in and around the Arts Center and so sometimes it's great to be able to capitalize on that workforce. I've been working with my colleague here, Bonnie, and uh, we've been chatting away and then people stop by and ask questions about it and it's a beautiful day. and. It's fun. The artist comes and corrects us a little bit and <laughs> tells us to weave a little bit differently. Yeah, it's great fun. I'm just putting it in and then... And you have to make sure to keep this window over here open. Then um, we can come and get another, put another stick like in an opposite direction and kind of keep these in and that adds to the interest of it. Patrick's work is very environmental in nature, and in fact, he says that he's been actually called an environmental sculptor, um, and he's very much uh, okay with that terminology. He uses renewable resources. Um, uh, the entire sculpture is created from willow. There are no metal supports. It's all created from natural materials. We set up a, a series of uprights. Uh, we've got some bigger trees. They form our kind of structural base. So we dug some holes and put those things down about two feet. Then we set up a scaffolding around the whole thing and used that as kind of an exoskeleton to pull the shape that we're looking for uh, that the sculpture, we want the sculpture to be. And uh, once that, you know, shape has been uh, figured out, then we can cut the strings loose that are tying it to the scaffolding and it stands on its own. Of course, this area, there's a huge connection to environmental sensitivity. That was something that was really important to us. We didn't want to put something up that was going to be damaging to the environment. Trees are very important to the Art Center property. They're going to be very important in our renovation. We loved how Patrick designed an installation that actually integrated with the trees on our property. People feel like the environment is a is sensitive and that without meaning to we all have had a profound effect on it just by being alive on the earth and so for some reason this kind of work uh, you know helps um, people re-remember the environment and uh, their place in it. when the piece is done with its life. And our hope is that you know we'll be looking at it every year to assess its condition and determine whether we want to keep it up or whether it, it needs to um, end its life. Um, we'll essentially wood chip it and um, we'll use the wood chips at the community garden or be able to use them at Foothill Park or we'll be able to donate them to a local park. So the piece actually goes back to the earth from which it came, which is a really important aspect of the piece. The work is temporary and then in its temporary nature is it does reminisce about the natural life cycles of birth and death and and it seems a little bit more interesting to me that the sculpture doesn't stay around. 
you know, that it has its own life and you have to come and kind of enjoy it. And you can enjoy the process of its being built and its process of, of its decline. His pieces are really intended for people to approach, to engage with. Um, when our work is completed, uh, visitors are gonna be able to actually walk into the work. There are wonderful little doors and windows that people will be able to walk into, look out of, really interact with the work. Well, ultimately, it's my job to excite people's imagination and stir, stir them up and to try to compel them through the visuals of the sculpture to come and take a look at it and to, for a minute, enjoy the illusion that I'm casting.